Hi, everybody. It is still June 10, 2021. You see this? Medical, a medical journal, a medical journal describes whiteness as a parasitic pathology that has no cure. Our skin creates a parasitic pathology, the color of our skin. Do you think things are, well, they've been insane for many, many years. Are they getting increasingly violently insane? If you have to actually hesitate to answer that, then you're not you're not w uh, well informed about what's going on in our country. Yeah, medical journal, study. Okay. Journal of the American Psycho, oh, it's those psychos. The American Psychoanalytic Association. Really? Okay, an article entitled, On Having Whiteness, written by Dr. Donald Moss, who is white, a faculty member of both the New York Psycho Psychoanalytic Institute and the San Francisco Center for Psychoanalysis. Now, we know about those psycho fields, well, many of you do, I'm sure, that they're rather psycho. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of people a lot of people who have no clue, who see journal, who see doctor, article in journal, and they believe everything, everything that is written. They don't know that every institution has been corrupted and science is no longer the science that we used to know. It's been thoroughly corrupted and now it's lie after lie after lie. White people have a particular susceptibility to the parasitic condition, which he says, quote, renders its hosts appetites voracious, insatiable, and perverse, and leads them to terrorize non-whites. <gasps> That's my problem. Oh my God. I mean, I've been terrorizing non-whites. I've had this appetite that's just been, oh my God, insatiable and perverse and just wanting to terrorize and terrorize for 62 years. Maybe I should go see Dr. Moss. Oh wait, there's no cure. It's a malignant disease that can only be prevented via massive programs of re-education. Two plus two, you better say five or you get tortured. You like our world? Sorry guys, we have ourselves to thank for this. We could have gotten an awful lot of this stopped if Americans, on the whole, cared about something other than their own little life. Yeah, re-education. We're parasites. White people are parasites. And that leads us to wanting to terrorize non-whites. This is scary. Let me just say, everything is getting worse rapidly. Cisco fires employees that question Black Lives Matter during a company-wide racism discussion. No questions anymore. You cannot question anything if you do not go along with all of this. You get fired. Your life gets destroyed. You get canceled. I wonder 
How many Americans recognize that, well, those of us who are certainly baby boomers, and then the gen, uh, was it Gen Z's? Can you recognize that we now live in a foreign country? Uh, getting rather, hmm, uh, communist, you know? Cozy on down with Mao. Cozy on down with Stalin. Cozy on down. To only being able to say what the official narrative is. That's it. Do not question anything. Two plus two equals five. If you don't say five, you get tortured. This is our life now, and it ain't going to get any better. Activists get Kentucky woman fired from 20-year job. She had this job for 20 years. Shut down her GoFundMe after she criticized Black Lives Matter. No. No. You can't debate any of the points. If you disagree, you get destroyed. Uh, this, this took place last year. Candace Owens started a GoFundMe for a restaurant owner in Alabama whose restaurant was destroyed by Black Lives Matter. GoFundMe suspended. Suspended the GoFundMe for this restaurant owner, for intolerance, over opinions, on protests. Intolerance of opinions. What? Um, this is not the country I was born into. This is not the country I grew up in. This is not the country I lived in for decades. This has been... Well, incremental, it's been an incremental change, you know, the boiling frog scenario. Just keep, you know, turning up the heat a little bit more, a little bit more, and then the frog just dies because it's not going to jump out of the pot because it doesn't recognize the incremental increases in heat. That's Americans. No matter how much you scream, fire, it's hot in here okay those who were punished for voicing their opinions on Black Lives Matter protests or riots a non-exhaustive list of those who have been taken out cancelled I will link below to this you can Check it out. There are a lot. There's a lot. And I have another list that I'll show you in a minute. Let's see. University researcher forced out for highlighting facts. Facts. Did I say that word? Facts. Facts. Showing non-racial bias in police shootings forced out. We don't care about facts anymore. We don't care about evidence anymore. We go with opinion and we go with whatever the official narrative is. Uh, w journals. Hey, we're going to go with this, right? We're going to go. Whiteness. Whiteness. We have a malignant disease. We're parasites. And we've got this insatiable perverse appetite to terrorize non-white non-white people I mean I, I could read this abstract you know, normally I would go to the journal itself and read it but all I needed was to read the headline and just one quote of this sick sick doctor uh, it was enough I don't why waste your time why waste your time? There is not, not yet a permanent cure. Okay. All right. Um, well, 
It's written in a journal. It must be, it must be accurate. I mean, they don't. They aren't these things peer reviewed. You know, okay, Americans are just so friggin' dumb. It's scary. You can't have a conversation. They won't. We're in trouble. Where is this going to go? Where is this headed? It's headed to re-education. It's headed to an awful lot of violence that will be committed upon white people here in our country. Do not think it has anything to do with... uh, yeah, it, it, which is also fascinating to me. The black community, what does that mean? What does it mean? Is every black American in the same exact community? No. No. Not at all. Uh, I think they're kind of like that white community. You know, a whole lot of differences, cultural differences, a whole lot of socioeconomic differences, a whole lot of difference of opinion. So there's not just one black community. And I delete comments that suggest it's black Americans. No, it ain't. Now, first of all, you see an awful lot of white Americans in these protests. You see an awful lot of white Americans who are looting You see a lot of white Americans who are committing violence. You see a lot of white Americans doing the tactics. You know, you try to talk to them, you can't. They just scream at you. You're a Nazi. You're a white supremacist. When you put all, all of what has been going on in this country, when you Take all of these factors and put them together. You know, you're not looking at everything in an isolated manner. You really get to see the direction. And when you see everything that's been going on, and of course you can't see everything, but, you know, if you do your best to try to get a a big picture of what is going on, you see that. And if you've been doing it for a while, like years, you see every year the the (laughs) speed has accelerated and it's accelerating now at a pace that it's just overwhelming. So we are in trouble, big trouble. Uh, A comedian speaks out after he was refused gig for being white, straight of being white, a white, straight, abled, bodied male. Hmm. Okay. University of Massachusetts nursing dean fired after saying everyone's life matters. Now, all of what you're looking at is within the last year. Okay. Some are very recent, like, well, this. May 27, 2021. Hmm. Fearing cancellation, some withdraw signatures from open letter decrying cancel culture. So there was an open letter decrying cancel culture. And then those who actually signed it said, take my name off. I don't want to be canceled. Oh, the irony. Scared, scared. People are scared. Scared into silence, and that's killing us. Pittsburgh professor stripped of position after publishing paper questioning affirmative action in admissions. You cannot have. It doesn't matter. If your opinions are backed up with facts and evidence, it does not matter anymore. They're going with the agenda. Whatever the narrative is that fits the agenda, that is the only thing that people will be able to voice. Do you, do you understand how serious this is?
Cambridge University defends and then promotes professor who said white lives don't matter. Yale professor at a speech, in her speech, actually talks about killing white people and loving it. That's okay. You get promoted when you say white lives don't matter. But if you say all lives matter, then you're canceled. This, it, this alone should uh, beg questions and tell people, huh, there might be an agenda here. Now, again, I'm going to read this, okay? Uh, Juliet Tang, another, another um, I'm not sure if it's she. Well, we'll get to it in what she writes. Let me just read it. Juliet Tang comments on social justice warriors, cancel culture, and the reality of the kind of society this creates. Juliet Tang wrote this. I got something to say about cancel culture and social justice warriors. Warriors, I don't get paid to educate some of the kids on the internet, so this is public service. I'm the granddaughter of a woman who was canceled by social justice warriors, except they were called Red Guards during the Chinese Cultural Revolution. That started in 1966, resulting in tens of millions of deaths, lasting famine, and its 10-year duration. Those red guards were youths and school kids brainwashed by the government to carry out acts of justice using means such as public humiliation, attacking, property destruction, physical torture of other human beings. No one was able to trust anyone. Hey, who do you trust? I don't trust anyone anymore. No one was able to trust anyone including close friends and neighbors, you would come home one day and find everything you owned burned to the ground and your loved ones dragged away. It's none of my business whether you're left or right, upside or upside down, but I will say the left has been deeply corrupt, infiltrated by forces that harvest energy of fear and division from human beings, among other things. Communism in America is what I'm seeing, along with many Americans who've turned into modern-day Maoists, most likely without their awareness. It's the signature move for Marxist, communist, fascist to name one group of people as the people's enemy so that they become the label of hate and everything that's wrong in our society. White people. White. White and right. Oh, the white left, they'll get executed. It's the right wing white people right now, the Trump supporters. Years I've been warning Trump supporters. Years. Don't identify yourself. <sighs> the social justice warriors are then free to use all tactics to project their shadows onto this group. The tactics include, but not limited to, public shaming, emotional manipulation, physical assault, verbal abuse, gaslighting, virtue signaling, destroying others' homes, taking away their property, cancel culture, and it's not new. I heard a month ago a woman coach who openly admitted she was a Trump supporter had her online business destroyed by social justice warriors. I could care less how you feel about Trump. I just know it doesn't give anyone the right to play God. Besides, if your anger towards one man is so deep 
that you're willing to destroy the reputation and livelihood of a stranger you've never met, there are clearly bigger issues than Trump that need urgent attention within that individual. Sick. We've got a lot of sick, sick, sick Americans. And they're out in force. Oh, and they march with an entitlement. But they flip around the gaslighting. They project onto those who don't display entitlement their entitlement. Look, when, when society is filled with an awful lot of people who are so sick and twisted, who honestly don't care about anything, don't care about anything, you know, perhaps, you know, they get involved in these protests, these movements to at least give them a sense of purpose? I don't know, but they sure as hell don't care about black people. They sure as hell don't care about white people, and they can do anything. They're so screwed up. Now, It's interesting that lately the left has chosen to recruit many woke or spiritual people to be the modern day red guards, selling them a vision of righteousness under Marxist ideology. I do believe some of the activists truly want to do good. Hey, deceived, manipulated, indoctrinated, lied to. You cannot bring about any good when that's your foundation. It is safe to say that those who have started the causes care nothing about the social justice warriors. No, Patrice Cullors. Well, I'm resigning now from Black Lives Movement uh, about uh, Black Lives Matter, but hey, you can catch me in Topanga Canyon in my $1.5 million home. Or wait, I could be going to my home and uh, where are the other ones in Georgia, I think? Um, and eventually I am going to be purchasing some fabulous place in the Bahamas. But I just couldn't do that because mm, information came out about my shopping for real estate adventures. Uh, even when all of this information comes out, you still have people who just... They don't understand what's going on. Really, <laughs> it's, it's true. So l let's just take a look at a little bit more here. Uh, this woman got her business destroyed, Big City Coffee. It was at a, I think it was on a campus. Big City Coffee and Cafe owner, Boise State University. Yeah, um, well, she didn't go along with Hate every police officer. Well, that's it. Run off campus. Um, threats, videos, and a recall. California militia fuels civic revolt in a red county. Wow, I just opened this. I don't even know what this one is about. Redding, California. Slow night in the trendy Market Street Blade and Barrel restaurant. Uh, Nathan Pickney, a budding comic and Black Lives Matter activist, spotted Carlos Zapata, Zapata at the bar. He knew it meant trouble. Okay. Speakers at supervisors' meetings have repeatedly threatened violence. Militia members have attended ra racial justice rallies carrying concealed weapons and opponents of the far right say they are increasingly afraid to speak out, fearing retribution. So these two men got into it, I guess, in this bar. Black Lives Matter activists ended up with a black eye. All right. Um, this kind of stuff is happening 
with greater frequency. Acclaimed British officer, um, sorry, author, Richard Cohen's new book on historians is canceled in the United States. Why? Well, he didn't include enough black academics. Pastor cancels Charlie Kirk event over threats of violence by radical terrorist mobs. Hmm. Yeah, I'll link below to this article in particular because it's unbelievable what happened to this medical student for simply questioning these microaggressions. University of Virginia branded him a threat and banished him from campus. For it was a meeting and he questioned. He was rather dissatisfied with the definition of microaggression offered by the presenter of this meeting and, well, his life became a nightmare. Medical student simply questioning these microaggressions. He was, he was respectful. Do you know how there are so many people having this happen to him now? A Mount, Mount Allison professor, uh, suspended without pay, and is investigated for writing on her blog questioning Black Lives Matter. All right. This man started a database of the canceled. I don't know. I, I, not every person canceled is within this list, but it is pretty extensive. Uh, the last cancellation suspended without pay, May 21, Rima Azar, professor, Mount Allison. Oh, it's this woman right here. Canceled. Maintained a personal blog that was critical of several ten, uh, tenets of critical race theory. In one post, she said, NB is not racist. And Canada is not racist. We do not have systemic racism or systemic discrimination. That's it. Goodbye. Suspended without pay. You want to see how many are on this list? And I'm not going to read anything. I have a link below to it, and you can check it out. But the source, click on the hyperlink, source. All of this sourced. It's not just Black Lives Matter. It's daring to say you know, there are only two biological sexes or questioning, you know, this thing. And you got professors, you've got radio hosts, you've got journalists, you've got preachers, you've got cartoonists, you've got adjunct professors and political editors and teachers and editors of journals. You don't funeral director, designers, professors, member of the Australian House of Representatives, huh. weather reporter, minister, former president, Donald Trump, permanent Twitter ban, two years banned from Facebook, and people on the left, a lot of them applauding this, Journalists, mainstream media reporters are actually uh, rooting for censorship. And people don't get it, right? Well, they'll get it because their life is going to get destroyed as well. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, let me just do it a little bit faster. Here we go. Here we go. A lot of people canceled. A whole lot of people canceled. A whole lot. And this is very serious. 
It's a very, very serious issue that we have here in the United States. And, you know, the left-right um, dichotomy, fighting one another. It's not getting us anywhere. So, um, yeah, it's a big deal. It's a very big deal. You know, watch this. When we did it, you guys. When we did it, you guys. Pastor, preach. What were you? What were you? When we needed prayer. Now you down here. What were you? We're not down here for this. We're not trying to fight you guys. We're not trying to fight you guys. I'd say that's an entitled, privileged guy who thinks that he can do whatever the hell he wants to do and doesn't care, has no respect for other people's lives. They want to rip down this statue in St. Louis. Regardless of what these statues represent, because that is not what this video is about. This video is about how similar are the behaviors of an awful lot of activists today to Mao's Red Guards, who spent an awful lot of time destroying, destroying a whole lot of statues. All ideas contrary to Mao's thinking and the objects that represented them had to be destroyed. Not just Confucianism and Buddhism, but even more so foreign faiths like Christianity. Throughout the country, churches were closed, clergy unfrocked, religious symbols smashed. The statue of the Virgin Mary was replaced by a portrait of Mao. One form of worship gave way to another. It, 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 it has to become a better world, and of course it didn't. It became a much worse world. The physical destruction wrought by the Red Guard was unparalleled even in China's long history. Monasteries all over the country, as far away as distant Tibet, were ransacked and razed to the ground. The most important sites, like the Forbidden City, were protected on the orders of Zhou Enlai. But elsewhere, Mao's storm troops had free reign. Zhou Enlai's implicit distinction between smashing bourgeois ideas and smashing bourgeois individuals was quickly forgotten. Over the next few weeks, tens of thousands of people in Beijing were harangued and severely beaten. Many hundreds died. I can remember as though it were yesterday watching a group of strongly built students, including some of my own classmates, boys who practiced martial arts 
jump up onto the platform. 1928, until he dared to criticize the chairman's great leap forward, was dragged out and publicly vilified. To his Red Guard accusers, Hung was a free anti element, wasteful, corrupt and bureaucratic, disloyal to Chairman Mao. Jiang Wen-tian, Mao's predecessor as party leader in the 1930s, was damned alongside him. Both men had devoted their lives to the Chinese Revolution. Now, they have no rights. Who was undergoing a slow descent into hell? The highest ranking victims were brought out for public humiliation before mass meetings in a football stadium. They wore placards around their necks with their names crossed out like common criminals awaiting execution. Wu Han was a playwright, one of whose works angered Mao. The chairman used it as a pretext to overthrow Wu's patron, the mayor of Beijing, Hung Jun. he'd set in motion would eventually claim other victims still higher in the chain of command. Meanwhile, Hung and his colleagues were left to twist in the wind. Is it exact to what was happening in China? No. It's a different time. We're a different country. But it's taking place. You know, we saw all the statues that were destroyed. The mob mentality. That is scary. But all of this is state sanctioned. It is state sanctioned. You know, the police then come and cart it away. Nobody gets arrested. Let's just do it, right? This is a destruction of our history, good or bad. All of these 
All of this destruction is a destruction of our history. Getting rid of it, just like they did in China. And you hear the screaming, the excitement. University of Illinois Chicago Law School cancels former Chief Justice John Marshall. That's right. Cancel our history. No. Don't use it to educate and to learn. Just cancel it. Get rid of it. Destroy it. And then claim that white people are just, we've got this parasitic pathology. Cancel culture. Professors targeted for standing up to the left. Campus reform reporters, professor, targeted with death threats, online harassment. A University of North Texas College of Music targeted for saying music theory isn't white uh, supremacy, isn't white supremacist. Clemson professor, Trump and anyone who still calls themselves a Republican is racist. <clears throat> you know, college director, every white person in this country is racist. Federal government hosted professors' talk on anti-racist education for young children. This is coming from the United States government. Huang's father, Huang Qixiang, was a former general of the Chinese Nationalist Party, the Kuomintang. It was enough to draw the ire of Chairman Mao's Communist Party and its Red Guard. Shortly after May 16, 1966, some Red Guards came to our home and pulled out a Japanese sword on my father. They got annoyed and beat my parents. We were kicked out of our house. What does that mean? It means all of your stuff is taken or burnt. Thousands of photos were burnt, except one. This was a very precious one. It's the one taken with Zhu Enlai, Zhu Di and Yi Zhangying. Huang's father had rubbed shoulders with top officials in the Communist Party. But that was before the Cultural Revolution. He would live out the rest of his days humiliated and persecuted. After his death in 1970, his wife wrote a plea to the then Premier Zhou Enlai, who gave her a house in the State Council as compensation. But Huang still has trouble assessing the true damage as he tries to come to grips with what the revolution was all about. And a lot have been trying to come to grips a lot of the Red Guards are regretting what they did, but government in China took private property from private property owners. They were thrown out of their homes. Seattle Black Lives Matter protesters demand white people give up their homes. <laughs> I guess that's good enough. Yeah. Statues. How about 
random violence. The woman who shot this viral Facebook video says she was shocked to see this roll past her dinner table. Video we muted for explicit language shows protesters screaming insults at restaurant goers as some leave their tables. This person walks over to an elderly couple, grabs a beer off their table and chugs it down. Another video shows demonstrators chasing away these people who rode their bikes through the crowd. This rider smacks somebody's bullhorn and gets whacked over the helmet with a skateboard. Those who were there say diners were bullied and harassed, but Neat Kraft, the one who drank the beer, says demonstrators acted in self-defense after the bike riders who rode through the crowd allegedly started this physical altercation caught on our cameras. Neek gave me permission to quote their Facebook post saying, quote, we seriously get hit every day that we march. Hewless aggression is escalating because the white moderate has decided we don't need to fight for our rights anymore. They went on to say, quote, protest isn't supposed to be cute marches down the street with adorable photo ops to be used for Facebook profiles. I'm here to disrupt. And that could have been taken right out of Mao's Red Book. can fuck the fuck off. We're done with colonizers. Indigenous people are done with colonizers. And what, what does that person think she or he is? I mean, if we're all colonizers, then we're all colonizers. Everyone who lives here, certainly who is white, right? Yeah, uh, the destruction was intense, just intense. And all of this was allowed, along with the looting. And the riots that were, well, the peaceful protests. You know, I'm just going to go on. This, look, this is really important. This is, you, everybody needs to take this very seriously. We are in big trouble. Yes. There was a famous hair salon. It displayed photographs of all kinds of hairdos. When the Cultural Revolution came, they were seen as examples of bourgeois decadence. A group of Red Guards took over the place. We said to them, when the revolution starts to dictate the style of people's hair, clothes, and shoes, isn't the revolution being trivialized? The insanity was also taking place in China during this time. The insanity that has taken place, uh, well, based on what I've seen, this Mao's uh, cultural revolution, the insanity here now is so unbelievably evident. That's why I worry for us all, because we don't seem to hear an awful lot of people who are speaking out against this unbelievable insanity.
I lived in South Carolina for years. I had discussions with South Carolinians about that Confederate flag, about the Civil War. A whole lot of people think it was just over slavery and that the South, the Southern states, the Confederate states wanted to maintain that slavery. I'm sure a lot of them did, but a whole lot of that war was started because of the North taxing the South for their cotton, and it was it was more about the federal government and their usurpation of the Southern states, their power. So, you know, when you when you don't even know your own history, then, and I'm not saying I know it and I've got the truth about it's so hard to figure out the history of our country, but when you see things that are so similar to the evil that took place in other countries now taking place here, you can't, you can't remain silent. Did I have a problem with Columbus? Oh, I did. Did I have a lot of problems with, you know, a, a lot of what is taking place? Yes, but you have rational discussions about it. You know, if you were living in a healthy society, none of this would be taking place. None of it. None of it. Is it, is it actually approved of by our leaders? Listen to our fabulous, very sick woman who happens to be Speaker of the House. I'm not one of those people who's wedded to, oh, a statue to somebody someplace is in. It's not about that. It's about destruction of property. Destruction of property. We're just going to allow a whole group of people destroy property. And it wasn't just statues. It was businesses. It was individual properties. Can we see, or when you listen to what clearly is a very sick, twisted woman, you know, and she She's constantly talking about the treason, well, of Trump and the Trump supporters and treason this, treason that. This is, right here, the epitome of a treasonous, well, American who should really be arrested and put on trial. An important thing. Uh, I don't, again, if the community doesn't want the statue there, the statue shouldn't be there. So if the community doesn't want somebody's house to be there, go for it. If the community doesn't want town hall to be there, go for it. If the community doesn't want state government, burn it down. If the community doesn't want it, hey, you know, let's just let them destroy it. Really, Americans, really? Nothing to say about these people. Okay, Democrats. I was a Democrat for decades of my adult life. And I walked away before hashtag walk away. I will tell you, Democrats, there's something very wrong with you that you are allowing your party to take us down fast. Well, look, social network filled with those educated, what they claimed that they were the elite. They don't know what the elite is. The educated middle or upper middle class 
Americans, white Democrats. You couldn't have a conversation with them. They became angry when you pointed out that their leaders actually lied, just like Bush and Cheney lied. They did not want the truth. They were not well people. Oh, well-adjusted to a disturbed society makes you disturbed. They did nothing. They allowed Obama to lie for eight years. Did nothing. But Bush and Cheney, they wanted to hang for their lies. That means they're all about personality and their team. They're cheerleaders for their team. They're not about truth. But now it's become so evident that it's really that party that is out front who are the communists, who are bringing in communism, who are allowing, hey, you know, this suits our agenda. Let them destroy property. And we'll just say, hey, the community wants those uh, statues gone. We'll let them do it. California District Attorney asks police to consider looters' needs before charging them. Let people commit crime. Let people steal from other people. Let other people be harmed by the looters because they might need, you know, that big TV that they steal or they might need it. So don't charge them. I'm sorry, Democrats. You are really not well. You're not well. Perhaps you want this to be taking place. Perhaps you want the communism, and you didn't want that freedom that this country, well, it definitely offered an awful lot of freedom. I grew up with it. I experienced it. So don't leave a comment saying we never had freedom in this country. It's always been the same. Bullshit. Don't gaslight me with those kinds of comments. You know, maybe all of those Democrats that were just part of my social network, maybe you just can't handle the freedom. Maybe you need those leaders to tell you what to do, how to live, and you want communism. I don't. What is taking place in our country, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Never before have we been on a threshold of losing everything. Losing, and an awful lot of us have already lost everything. And it's only a matter of time for you to lose everything. Leaving your children and grandchildren with hell. All of those who were silent, you are manifesting hell for not just yourself, but everybody. Sorry, I do not agree. Well, I get to live however I want to live. You talk about freedom? No. As an adult, you get that you have a responsibility. As an adult. You, if you have not gotten to the place, and you're an adult, where you recognize that you have a responsibility beyond your own little life, you have not matured. You have not grown. You've not become a humane human being. There's a ripple effect to everything we do. There's a ripple effect to everything we don't do. (sighs) 
Sorry, but I care. And I cannot stand seeing how many don't care about anything but their own little life. It's hard to take, and now we see it on a daily basis because that is the juxtaposition of all of the violence, all of the very um, clear messaging that we are getting that we will be living the same hell, the same hell that the Chinese lived. Whiteness, color of our skin. We have an incurable malignant disease because of the color of our skin. This is enough. Just this one, one headline is enough that it should at the very least beg questions, that it should create an alarm that goes off in people's brains that says, well, something is very wrong. Something is very wrong. Something is very wrong here in the United States.